can use for school. I kind of agree, but disagree at the same time. You know, you can use Anki to not only memorize, but you can also understand concepts. You can also fill in the gaps of your knowledge. You can, you can quiz yourself using Anki. You can do basically anything you wanted to do. But it just depends on your mastery of Anki. You got to know how to use Anki and, and many of its features. Use Anki as if it is your second language. And that's my biggest advice on using Anki, really. Just make sure you, you, you know how to use Anki very well. You know, fast enough that you can even make Anki cards while in lecture. At the same time, you know, after class, you can try to go to textbook page, pages where you go to chapter reviews and copy and paste the questions into Anki and then implement those multiple choice answers into Anki and, and then when you approach those flashcards again in the future you can answer those cards that's that's a you know that's a comprehensive question that you can answer maybe but basically what I'm trying to say is that not only can you implement memorization you know, for short and long-term memory, you can also understand what's happening. You can also fill in the gaps of your knowledge. Um, you can record your voice to tell you what's important about each of these flashcards. You can also implement pictures, and you can associate, you can tag each card so that you can find whatever you need to find uh, specifically for Anki. So. Another big component about Anki that could help you for courses is that you can implement all of the Anki cards from one deck into a PDF file so that you can skim over like the day before the exam. Now it may accumulate up to like 30 pages, 40 pages worth, but it's worth it. You can skim down, you can think of it as your notebook for your course. After you, assuming that you went over every single flashcard already and then, and according to Anki's algorithm, then you can, you can probably be confident enough to go through that PDF file pretty fast. And so you basically have a gist of what the course is about through your Anki cards, assuming you made those Anki cards appropriately, and are consistently going through all of the cards every day, right? <clears throat> and so you'll have a good understanding of the course. Now, remember, Use questions from the textbook. Um, remember to read the textbook too. You know, you're making Anki flashcards based off of textbook, off of PowerPoints. Another good advice that I was given uh, a month ago that I've been doing actually, and it's it's been working very well with me, is that when you use when you when you receive PowerPoints from professors before or after lecture, um, you can try to condense each PowerPoint so that you know it can be converted from 50 slides into like 20 slides and then within those 20 slides you can make Anki cards based off of those slides not only will you understand the material effectively you're also making better Anki cards as a result now remember I always encourage that Anki cards has to be simple it has to be basic it has to be okay because of A it is B you can also sparingly just not all the time but you can also implement flashcards that require multiple steps I don't recommend this but sometimes it's necessary like remembering the steps of glycolysis pentose phosphate pathway gluconeogenesis Krebs cycle stuff like that it's probably necessary uh, if you're in you know graduate level medical school stuff like that um, so Anki card can work in that sense I wouldn't recommend to do close overlapping all the time, but it really does help with some specific cases. Remember that when you're doing Anki cards, remember to always write down what you're looking at. You know, write down the memory techniques that you're using. You know, like you can you can just mind map whatever you want to, you know, on a tablet, right? This is called a boogie board, by the way. It's very helpful. Uh, for you know working on Anki cards as I'm writing down what's important right some of these Anki cards are pretty simple so I can fly by through them quickly but you know sometimes you need to use muscle not muscle but memory techniques you know such as memory palace right and 
you know, many, many different types of mnemonics. And this is why when you do Anki queries, remember to, you know, put, put a little hint on the bottom right corner saying you should be able to use this mnemonic to get your answer. But do this on the back of the card. Don't do it in the front of the card. Uh, assuming that you got the, the card correct or incorrect, you can then check on the back of the card to see if you use that mnemonic. That's how you can learn effectively and systematically. Remember, condense your PowerPoint slides, read the textbook, use and make Anki cards effectively. These are big components into, uh, into understanding the course and implementing all of what you know into your long-term memory so you don't have to like relearn everything repeatedly. I mean, unless, unless you learn this material like maybe three years ago, it may not come up in your head as fast, but maybe those mnemonics will come back at you, you know? You're implementing a lot of pictures in your Anki cards so that, you know, of course, pictures are worth a thousand words, so you have a lot of associations mixed in. You have voice recordings, you have all of these things. And also, last but not least, when you finish all of this, I do recommend to listen to lecture recordings, you know, just to see if you know everything that the professor is saying, seeing if it all makes sense. These are my advice.